Aloha kako. The title of the chant we shared is Ku Nihi Kehiakohoi, written by Kalani Kuloloya, a former Hawaiian language instructor at our college. The mountain you see in the photo is called Kiahiakahoi, and our campus is nestled at the base of this mountain. This picture is taken as I was driving to work one morning, and I just really wanted to show people um, this is what Hawaiians possibly saw when they named this mountain Kiahiakahoi, because it looks like smoke from a fire coming off of the mountain. Kiahi means the fire, and a of Kahoi. Kahoi is a um, a person of legend who lived at this mountain, and he had a brother, Pahu, and a sister, Loe. Pahu lived at the seashore, and who was a fisherman who traded his catch with what Kahoi raised as a farmer. And this is the um, familial exchange that they took part in. Uh, it came a time where Pahu was not being generous as Kahoi was and began to give Kahoi uh, less fish or undesirable fish. And Kahoi was giving his brother the choicest. And when Kahoi realized that this is what Pahu was doing, um, pa he stopped trading with Kahoi. And the mo'olelo or the story is that he, um, Pahu would then see the fires lit for Kahoi to cook his uh, food that he farmed. And he would go hungry looking at the fires because he had damaged that relationship through his um, greediness. And so, uh, this story, in a way, is going to relate to our, our presentation as well, because relationships are the key to the success of our program. In uh, Karen Eber's TED Talk, she shares that it's a way for the right and the left brain to connect information that are information driven as well as connective. And so we think that Mo'olelo is powerful or stories are powerful. And chats are filled with place names and stories of uh, each other. Welcome to our presentation on Indigenous language equity through Hawaiian language dual enrollment pathways done by the Mala A'oa'o Kaiolu staff of Windward Community College for the National Association of Bilingual Educators Conference 2021. We will be hosting a Padlet participation board and this slide shows the link and the QR code for you. Please go to the Padlet at this time and answer question one. If you don't have time to finish it all, it's okay. We're gonna leave the Padlet open and you can go ahead and drop your answers in at a later time. Mahalo. 
Vilina mai me ke aloha e na hoa o ka aina pua ilikea, ka pua sepenia, a me na pua pakipika. Aloha kako e. O ka lai ake o ka koui noa, mai na pali hauli uli o ke koo lau, a he a, kanaka a wa mokole ana wau e pili na ano apau o ka olelo Hawaii. Mai ka hoomaka o ka uoi hana, he a o, Ko ukuleana a mahope aku he kako o ko ukuleana a i kia manawa he ho o mau ko ukuleana i ka olelo Hawaii mana ano like ole mana vahi like ole. A hau ole wau i ka uhana maka ho o noho noho ana i na mea o ka papahana nei e like ho i me ka ho o noho noho papa, kukulu papa manawa, Haya ina kumu ana mea like ole e holo mua puno ai kia papahana. Aloha. Aloha mai kako o ululani kahi kina kou inoa he kama wau no kane ohe a ka i kia mau la no ho au makani. He ka i ao ao au no na hau mana o ka papahana o mala ao ao kaya uru. He kua ana he kako o no au i kia mau hau mana e kokua ya lako me ka lako wala hele na o wau ma kia kula nui nei. Aloha. Aloha mai kako. O ka apana i noa o hana o moke keia. E hana nei wau i a polo kalama nei me he ano la e ho'o paa na awau. Aloha. My name is Moke Kaapana. I'm from Kailua, Oahu. And in this program, I provide support as a documentarian. Please use the Jamboard link below if you have any questions for us. And if you're interested, leave your details and we'll be able to answer you after this conference. When we talk about our origin story, I feel like any other ancient people, our origin starts in a very, very dark subconscious beginning, as Jung would say, that we really can't remember, but we have a feeling about. And that origin is referred to as the cosmogonic or origin story. Maybe we could liken it unto Genesis in the Bible. But that story may or may not have started when we lived in Hawaii. I, I believe that it was started long before we got here, while we were amongst our cousins in the Polynesian group. This picture shows our hosting, Captain Cook, at a dinner that would have been given to any other high ranking chief or official that represented another island group or cousins visiting. And so I believe that it's a great sort of bringing together of the two cultures to represent our homeland and our visitor. And so when we talk about how long we were here, there's all sorts of arguments. But what I wanted to show is that our story starts just like anyone else's at the very beginning. And we come into it when we were mapped in 1778 by Captain Cook. All these ships arriving bring all of these new peoples, friends, as well as foreign ideas. Ultimately what happens is the Hawaiian kingdom is illegally overthrown and our lands are annexed away from us. And to add insult to injury, English is recognized as the only language for media instruction in the classroom. But don't count us out. I've got a wonderful story to share with you. My father told me that when he was growing up as a young man, he got a letter from the teacher to take home to my grandmother. And the letter instructed my grandmother to stop using the Hawaiian language in her home because it was affecting his ability to learn English in the classroom. And my, mother, my grandmother so proudly replied to him, unless that teacher wants me to come and tell her how to be a teacher, she better not tell me how to be a mother. I share that story here because I think it's a wonderful example of the resilience of our indigenous people. With the arrival of the missionaries and the printing press, really it creates an opportunity for the written language to flourish. And what we see is not only the reader being used to make sure everyone can read, but the idea of reading just took off. 
And a way to sort of show it as evidence is the number of newspapers printed from that era and, and the volume of knowledge that's there will, will really only ever be understood as the canon that it represents once our indigenous language is normalized here in Hawaii. Kaui Keoli, our Ali'i, noted in that time period, e aupuni palapalako, mine is a kingdom of literacy. And that quote's important here because he not only recognized the importance of literacy, but he established the public school system, which essentially used Hawaiian language as a medium of instruction. Really a way to look at all these numbers and figures and dates is that we were on fire for language and literacy. Everybody wanted to read. And what they wanted to read were newspapers and publications and learn about their culture and heritage. And the importance of reading was so well noted that our king decided to create a compulsory educational system. And so we see that not only in amongst all these other pressures are we perpetuating our language and continue to see it as a primary form of language. We're also recognizing the importance of the use of it in the classroom. One of the tough barriers to our resilience is the 1893 overthrow, which removed the sovereign of our kingdom and annexed our lands away from us. And, and as a result of that, losing essentially control, really agency, losing agency um, brought us into this modern era. Uh, where English is the only media of instruction. Um, our culture is being heavily influenced to change its ways. And, and really, maybe even a dark period. And soon after that, soon after that, the language nearly dies. In 1978, a constitutional convention was held here in the state of Hawaii. And the importance of a constitutional convention is that it allows the citizens to sort of open up or uh, interact with the constitution or governing paperwork of that peoples and of that area. And so particular to our uh, indigenous language, what the constitutional convention did is actually recognize the Hawaiian language as an official language of the state of Hawaii. And this opened up the opportunity to create further legislation uh, that includes the establishment of the Hawaiian language immersion program, Kulakaya Puni, along with a Kupuna program, uh, which is in, in a sense, an opportunity to bring Hawaiian culture specifically back into our elementary schools by employing our, our cherished oldsters, uh, our, our elders um, to come and teach the Hawaiian culture to all fourth graders throughout the state of Hawaii. We can look at it as, as a formalized kind of intention on the part of our people to influence not just our educational system, but maybe the general public and culture of our island home. The 1980 US Census brought us very startling news. Less than 60 individuals under the age of 18 spoke the indigenous language of Hawaii. And so, Punanaleo preschools is really the response to that feeling of the fear of the loss of our native language. And once those children grew up, there became a really obvious need to decide what would happen next. And so in 1987, 
we have the first or what was agreed upon by the government, the pilot program of Kikula Kayapuni, the immersion schools that start at kindergarten and finish at 12th or graduation level, finishing out the high school. At or about the same time, uh, we see the establishment of a bachelor's degree at the University of Hawaii in Hawaiian studies, followed soon after by the Hawaiian language. English remains the medium of instruction. Soon after, a master's degree in Hawaiian studies and a master's degree in the Hawaiian language is established in the university system here in Hawaii. And English remains the medium of instruction. Soon enough, we have a master's degree in education, Hawaiian education, where Hawaiian language is the medium of instruction. When I graduated from the university, I really kind of struggled with what my degree meant. I had a degree in a bachelor's degree in Hawaiian studies, but I wanted it to mean more. And so I went and I followed the procedures available and I fought with the university because I felt like at that time in my mind, I wanted my degree, the, the actual piece of paper to have more meaning for me. And my story then was that I was gonna be some, I don't know, college counselor and promoting college to all these fine young uh, children raised in Hawaiian language. And, and so I wanted my degree, it was so clear to me, the image, uh, to be on my wall, right? And I thought, that, can't, that degree can't be in English, it's gotta be in Hawaiian. As a result, since about the late 90s, you can graduate from the University of Hawaii system with a degree printed in the Hawaiian language. Now that we've established a context for understanding our story, our presentation is gonna continue as we talk about our efforts towards equity uh, for our indigenous language here in Hawaii. It's time for our Padlet Participation Board. And at this time, we ask you to go to question two. Again, no worries if you don't have time to finish because this will remain open after our presentation. And now a quick success story from one of the graduates of our Mala Ao Ao Kayaulu program. Wai puna lau ki aloha ya kākua pau e ano vau ka iu kapu baker no ka ua ki a po ai hale o ka halu umaiau e haumana au maki kula nui o maano i ki a manawa a kai no vau i puka i ki a maka hiki elua kauka ni iwa ka alua mai ka early college me ki kula nui o ki kula kai ulu o na ko alau ano pala pala i a au i loa ai o ano ka pala pala I ka Hawaiian studies, I make a associates in the liberal arts. I work 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 in the liberal arts. I know um, reports like it all. I'm not aware what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know about it. I'm not aware of what I know Mau a koma ina papa o yaku keki eki e o kekula ma. Waho ka hua Maori no ia wau e ki a papa ana kula kula nui me besese o yai mamua i ko papa kula vaina papa Eva papa Umi a ole i like ko uo oa e like me ki a wa no le loa a o no wau ka malama na ia uiho a ka ike ana ko u ko u mana make ano he hawaii a ko u mana make ano he ho mana what mamuli o ke komo ana i ka polo kalabo o mai ike 
ua oya kuko ui ini e komo ina papa ua oya kuko ui ini e ho o mau makikula nui a e komo i ka polo kalamu o la loho wai a e kii ke la kekele ua kokua nui ia ke ia polo kalamu a me ke kala mamuli o ke kako o nui ia e ke kahi mau a hui ua hiki ke upu pau ia ko u hele kula nui ana me ke la mau kala kuulu kala wa hiki i ko u mama kua ke mala me ke kala he nui alaila mahalo nui ba i kia polo kala mu e ai o ia ku u aka mai i ko u mama a o ia ku ko u a ko i ke ana ia u iho ma ke ano he Hawaii a wa pa aka i ke i pono ai e pimea e polo mua i pao About Mala Ao Ao Kaiolu. Our grant comes from the Title III federal monies. Um, it is written for Kula Kayapuni, which are Hawaiian language immersion schools in the Ko'olau district, which is the windward side of Oahu. Those are our target populations. We offer dual credit courses taught in the Hawaiian language to any high school student who wants to participate. The services of our grant are targeted towards first generation, economically disadvantaged Hawaiian students. Our target population are not AP students. And because our philosophy is that AP students are gonna make it to college no matter what. So we really are targeting the students who might not be thinking about college, who might just be like a C average student, but we want them to have a college opportunity and success um, in college courses to feel like college is someplace that they belong. Um, we really want the students that normal schools would say they're not college material, and we want to give them the courses and show them that they really are. Um, we have to, we understand that college is a place where you have to be independent and responsible. And we are willing to work with them through our support systems to get them to where they will be successful and independent when they graduate from high school and move on to college on their own. Um, our structured support systems are there to meet students halfway in this, in this way. And, um, we have intentional course selection that is means that we won't put them in a course that's very, very challenging as their first course. We will put them into courses that are hands on and might be material that they've already been taught as a Hawaiian immersion student. So it might be Hawaiian language because they already speak Hawaiian or it might be Hawaiian studies, a general introduction to Hawaiian studies because they already know a lot of that material already. With an instructor, we try to select our instructors as well to be instructors that will work with this kind of population. We wouldn't normally put first time students into a lecture only writing intensive course because we want to ease them into something that they will be, be able to be successful with. Our program is most successful when we have a healthy relationship with our high school partners. Program structure. Between high school and WCC, we work together to determine students who will enroll in our courses. The coordinator sets up the course, scheduling, and instructor recruitment. There will always be an early college course offered each semester. If we are lucky, we will offer two, depending on the availability of an instructor. The early college team, with the help of a high school liaison, assists with student registration and onboarding. The high school helps with form collection, announcements, and answering questions or concerns from parents. Between the instructor and success coach, every course we offer in our program has a WCC instructor and a high school success coach. The instructor is responsible for course content and grading. The high school success coach provides support for student learning and communication with parents and high school personnel. The benefit of having college instructors on the high school campus is that students are in sheltered classes, which means that students do not have to find transportation to our institution and that it fits better in their campus bell schedule.
Although the responsibilities of the success coach are varied among the sites, they are integral to the program. For example, hosting study hall days, tutoring, treatment of FERPA, etc. Not all early college programs have success coaches. We attribute our success rate to the inclusion of a success coach. Also, success coaches improve instructor support and willingness to return to our program. The early college advisor will work closely with the instructor and success coach to monitor student progress in the course and will meet with students for additional support. Aoao, advising. During my advising sessions, I normally like to dedicate a few minutes to vala'o or converse with my students as they check in to see how the student is doing. This can entail whatever the student is willing to share, whether it is personal or academic related. By doing this, I want to let the student know that they are in a safe environment to make them feel comfortable. And because I genuinely care how they are doing given the circumstances at hand and how that might be affecting them. I also take this opportunity to share any updates or events coming up that the student will benefit from, such as financial aid or application workshops and deadlines. For the online virtual advising platforms, because we have had to transition and accommodate our services in an online setting, students became more accessible in this method of intrusive advising than they were previously. With online literacy, this opportunity gave us a chance to introduce or revisit our campus online platforms and ensure that they were all well-versed in these platforms. When tracking student progress, we encourage students to also track themselves online um, and also provide a clear communication with the instructor or success coach if they need extra support. When discussing future plans after high school, I'd like to pose the question in their freshman year, what is your career or field of study you are interested in? If the student is unaware or is not sure, then I then pose the question, well, how do you see yourself serving your Lahui or your nation or community? In what capacity do you see yourself serving your Lahui? I also like to use the Focus 2 Career Education and Planning website or the RASIC assessment, otherwise known as the Holland Code. Uh, these are just some of the resources that students can use to start thinking about their career, although the results um, students may receive are not set in stone. I also remind students that between their freshman and senior year, um, their decisions about where they see themselves career-wise can change, and that's okay. Due to the pandemic and the stay-at-home order, students began to question their efforts in continuing in the program and the value of earning a degree. It has been my biggest duty in this role as their advisor during this unfortunate time to ensure that their continued success, feeling of security, and that all their work prior to COVID, present, and future work will not be in vain despite these changes and transitions. It has also been helpful to remind students about the purpose of serving their lahui and why, it has been a source of motivation for them to stay strong and diligent as our kupuna or ancestors have done before us. Please take a moment to take a break and add your answer to question number three in our Padlet participation board. This is a sample pathway of our four-year academic subject certificate in Hawaiian studies related concentrations, such as mo'olelo, olelo, and ahukua. In the fall of freshman year, students are enrolled in IS-103, Introduction to College. This course is not a required course in their degree pathway. However, it is a course that will help students learn the fundamentals of college level preparation and expectations. Students in other high school levels will be offered another course that will not only fulfill a prerequisite requirement or elective course, but will also keep students interested and engaged in a higher educational learning environment. All course offerings are planned with the intent to fulfill associate degree and academic subject certificate requirements for Hawaiian studies or Hawaiian studies related concentrations. Such courses include Hawaiian studies 107 and first year Hawaiian language courses, which are necessary in fulfilling graduation requirements. IS 103 Intro to College is a course that Uda mentioned earlier 
as something we offer quite regularly to our first-time college dual enrollment students. This course is also offered on our campus as um, in freshman cohorts. Um, so a traditional IS-103 course might um, start with introductions telling about yourself and interests, where our Hawaiian language immersion version of the course might ask you to tell a story of your aina or tell about your ohana. Um, and it's just some different uh, perspective in a, the approach to sharing about yourself. Um, sample activities might be research about the importance of going to college, where we might ask our students to research old Hawaiian newspapers about education and college and compare them to current um, college in, uh, topics. Um, and the sample and product might be write a personal statement, um, but in the kaipuni, it might be work, work with a professional in your field of interest and solve a community problem because a lot of our Hawaiian language immersion programs are focused on community responsibility and problem solving. And this has a very place-based learning type of approach. Relationships are key. It is important that we value the relationships that are fostered within these partnerships with the college, high school campuses, and families. With that in mind, it is important that we engage with personnel who are familiar with the Kayapuni college and community culture. It is also important that we develop a sense of trust between campuses to guarantee that all relationships are pa'a, are secure. As we continue to build student readiness skills, the instructors, success coaches, and advisor communicate closely to fulfill this need in the program. We prioritize our sense of responsibility to our community and will make every effort to support our students participating in our program collectively. Aloha, it's time once again for your final question on our Padlet participation board. Please use this link to go to question number four. If you would like to leave a comment as well, you may leave it at this time. And don't forget, if you want us to respond, please leave your contact information. Mahalo. As we approach the end of our presentation, we'd like to highlight some of the takeaways for you to kind of think about when you uh, go to go on to your next sessions. Uh, one of the takeaways is that our program really concentrates on removing barriers for our students. And so these barriers are things like costs to higher education. So our courses are higher education courses that we provide for free. Um, sometimes it's success in academic endeavors. And so we have a lot of support systems in place and our students usually run between a 90 to 95 percent success rate in our courses meaning that they receive a's b's or c's at a 90 to 95 percent rate um, it's also inclusive we don't have an application process we like to just um, welcome all students who would like to try to be in our program um, we also provide a, a sheltered setting so that students feel they're with their peers and they're not mixed in with regular um, college students. It gives them a sense of um, belonging and that they're able to participate. Um, another uh, barrier that some students experience is transportation. So in some pre-college programs, the um, students have to come to the campus in order to take the courses. And we understand a lot of times when people criticize our program design, they talk about, um, you know, the students need to come on campus so that they know what college life is like. And that's true to some extent. We usually leave those for summer school courses because um, if the students are on their high school campus and they don't have transportation, then that's already a barrier. So we try to provide, we send our instructors to the campus, the high school campus, and we try to get students um, on into our courses without having to worry about transportation. And then the other aspect of, and related to transportation is scheduling because when students have to travel to the campus, it takes time away from their uh, day that they could do other classes. Um, and sometimes they'll have to miss two high school periods instead of just one. And so by sending our instructor to the campus, we uh, eliminate that barrier because it's the instructor that does the traveling and so it's the instructor schedule 
and normally instructors have a more flexible schedule than a high school campus. Um, another takeaway is that we're modeling a language medium or a Hawaiian language as a medium of instruction into a post K-12 setting. And this has always been a goal of the program that students would be able to be educated for their entire K to college um, career in Hawaiian language as it once was in the, the time before the history lesson that uh, Moke shared with you. And so um, all of our instructors teach in um, Hawaiian language and it is something that's um, been done for 30 years in the K to 12 setting, but in the college setting, it's really only been limited to teacher preparation programs. And so um, our model is showing the students that you can take courses across the curricula um, in the Hawaiian language. Our third takeaway is that indigenous culture and language have us some sort of equity in this system that was traditionally West, a Western education system. And so um, even in Hawaii, it was a, a while before um, Hawaiian language and Hawaiian studies became degree uh, pathways. And prior to say 19, about the mid eighties, you were not able to get a degree in either of those subjects. So, you know, that was a step in the right direction. And as we um, provide, are able to provide degree pathways using that language and culture as a basis instead of a Western uh, formulated system, then we move towards equity for the indigenous people of Hawaii. And, and then our final um, takeaway, which is honestly for me one of our most important um, successes is that we've positively impacted students and their relationship and decision making around post secondary pathways. And so we um, share this video uh, from Katyo Glasgow, who was has graduated from our program and um, shares us a little bit of a story about being a student in high school that didn't really think that he was college material and um, we've influenced him to believe that he really is. Aloha. E olu olu e hai mai i kaloleana o ko manao ma ke komo ana ina papa kula nui. Walaila, ma ko papa Eva, ma ko e mai o ya i kamo ko mai ki kai kula um lekania. Um so no walaila, ua ano bali bali ko manao no ke kula ki e ki e kula nui. Um a ole pao Makana Abina, uh, Lava Leo, and Yahemel, Lava Livali, no. Alela Walali Paha, Okay, so the Kiva have a Pana, uh, Walali Loa Kumanao, um, Kiva Hikio, Hanina Abina Henui, uh, Ko Makamakai, Kupono, uh, um, Aole e Manao Pala e the Oli Po Manao, but Ua Lodi, uh, Polio e Hanina, um, Papa Kuda Nui Kiki, yeah. No Laila, Kiamanava, Helena Oi Kikula Nui. I Heleo Yam, a BCS, no Koku, um, E. Uh, we also like to um, encourage you to participate in our Instagram post share. Um, and we'd like you to use hashtag NABE Mo'olelo. Again, Mo'olelo means story in Hawaiian, and it's our way of sharing a little bit of us. So what we did was we just added this hashtag to one of our posts that we already did. 
and then we're gonna just tell you a little bit about it so i did share this on my personal instagram this is a picture of Mo'omomi on Molokai, where I uh, spent a lot of time as a child. And we were doing an A'a O'lelo, which is a Hawaiian language challenge for the month of February, because February is Mahina O'lelo Hawaii, or Hawaiian language month. And uh, the question was, what's your favorite place? And the challenge, the intent of the challenge is to uh, dare people to use Hawaiian. So we had this. Uh, this was my post for favorite place. Kukia Imauna represents a movement of Aboriginal peoples in Hawaii to support and guard our beloved homeland. As it evolved to include education and support, one of the first lessons we learned was that we could take care of ourselves and that we could promote our own agenda and that we could in fact change our own narrative and bring it to the forefront. In growing through that experience, we understand that everyone has their mauna, has their heritage or language that they find dear and important to them. And we'd like to hear about yours. Please be sure to use the hashtag N-A-B-E Mo'olelo to share your Mo'olelo, your story about what it is that's important to you in the preservation of your indigenous heritage. For my IG post, I have chosen a photo of my daughter. In her hand is the Hawaiian flag. Um, her name is Emmeline Ululani. She's two years old. And with this photo, I used the quote, it was first uttered in 1843 by Kauikiaoni Kamehameha Ekolu when our kingdom was under threat. The meaning in English is the beautiful flag of Hawaii may you forever wave. It is a motto that reminds us about the pride in our flag and the event that took place in our history. And I thought it was fitting to share with this photo of my daughter. My mo'olelo is to help build and contribute to a world in which I envision my daughter living in where her indigeneity is not compromised by colonial ideals. So that's enough about us. How about you? What is your mo'olelo? If you would like to participate, please post a picture in your IG account or story. Include hashtag uppercase N-A-B-E-M, lowercase O-O-L-E-L-O, you can look for other mo'olelo using the hashtag. If you are able to, please comment on your new friend's mo'olelo. And don't forget to follow us at WCC underscore ECHS if you would like to know more about our program. Mahalo again. As many of us have experienced, success comes through working cooperatively. And so we'd like to take this time to thank our community partners and program support of which none of this would have been possible. And we'd like to thank you, our guests here at the National Association of Bilingual Education Conference of 2021. Nui ka mahalo ya oko no kikipa anamai. Aloha no a hui hope.